Okay, guys, here we are. We are here for the next session of the Soul Sisters podcast, webcast. And today we are discussing my hubby's fantastic book, The Definitive Testosterone Replacement Therapy Manual. Woo! <laughs> so, I, I'm really glad that we're discussing this because my husband is so passionate about helping men realize and tap into the greatest potential. And it's not about, so this book was not written about bro science. This was not about, hey, you know what, dude, you gotta be, you gotta have muscles and be strong, yeah. No, this is about <laughs> men today having, lacking the hormone that is natural in their body. And interestingly enough, in the society that we live, I mean, if you don't, unless you live in the jungle somewhere, we are exposed to numerous, numerous things that actually diminish a man's uh, natural testosterone uh, levels. So this was written as a way for men to look and see, okay, what is it that's going on with my body? And how can I recognize what's going on with my body? This is, it's so cool because anybody can take this book to their doctor and say, doc, this is what's going on with me. And I noticed on this page, it says blank, 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 blank. Help me understand what's needed and how can I, how can I deal with this? So it's more or less of like a, I guess you can say like a book for dummies, but not really dummies, like people that are just more in line with what they want to do with their health, men. And it's great for women because many of us as wives, um, sisters, um, relatives, whatever it is, we, we recognize some things in, in our loved ones that perhaps they don't even recognize themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really cool when you start noticing some of the things. And, and I have to tell you, I'm like so proud of Jay because he has helped, I'm not kidding you, countless men with their health in regards to this and and if you guys don't mind i wanted to read like one of the emails that he he had gotten with respect yeah. to, to kind of give you an idea on what he deals with <laughs> day in day out um, on helping this so uh, this email i'm not going to give out names or anything but it says jay i finally had to write just to say thank you i went back to school late in life graduated around january 2015 when I left school, I was 35 years old, 5'10", and 335 pounds. I was horribly obese and decided that I was sick of it. My doctor told me he didn't expect me to lift past 52, so I started trying to drop weight and get healthy. By July of 2015, I was down to 315 and was getting very discouraged. That was also about the time I discovered your blog and also Mike over at DNP. I listened to every podcast, read every blog, and started putting things into practice. I've started listening to the Ask Jim and Jay show very frequently. Fast forward to today, I'm down to 240 pounds, I weight train four days a week and do cardio as much as I can, sometimes six days a week, sometimes only three. I have a family, so I need to work around the kids. My skin is getting thin, and I can see the mess of popping out, especially in my shoulders, and my doctor told me this morning he expects me to live for a long time now. I bought your TRT book about five months ago, and I've been on TRT for about four mm -hmm. months. I'm getting my labs done monthly right now in an attempt to find the right dosage for myself. I'm going to a clinic where I get 125 milligrams test sip a week, going to 150 milligrams in two weeks. I know that's not what you preach due to the half-life of test sip, and I'd likely start self-administered test prop in a more stable why once I'm comfortable reading my own blood work. I'm still learning how to read my own blood work, but I'm getting better. I also started metformin about three weeks ago, 500 milligrams in the morning and 500 milligrams before bed. I've been paying close attention to my fasted glucose levels. I feel amazing, and brother, I own most of this to you. Your work has completely changed my life. You literally gave me another 25 to 30 years of life, and all I can do to repay you is just to say thank you. So thank you, Jay. If there's anything I can do to help you get the message out, just ask. I hear this a lot in the health and fitness community, but if I can do it, I know everyone can do it. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Oh, I want to cry. Oh, so sweet. That's incredible. Yeah, so, so this is what he sees. And you know what, you guys? The, What's interesting is there's so many, I mean, if you look, look around society today, look at men as a whole, and we see so more femininity in men mm -hmm. than we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it, ladies. What do you think are, if, when you think of a man, what characteristics do you think? What do you think, Krista? Well, strong and assertive and um, confident and a leader are some of the traits I think of. What about you, Erica? The first thing I thought of was chest hair. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, you know, 
I, I, I guess my mind first goes to the physical attributes, like larger shoulders, chest, arms. And then with that goes sort of like a projected, um, like outward sense of like confidence, like rat, like more, um, more outputting first rather than taking in first, which is not true for everybody, but I guess that's, I guess that's my first kind of like thought when I think of men. Right. And <clears throat> because I mean, when you think about a man, like what I think about, especially as a woman, I think about a man like, like in a secure fashion. Like so when we think of him, like we mm -hmm. walking next to our mate, we're like, wow, my man's got my back. He's going to protect me. He's here. He's, I feel safe. Mm -hmm. That's, I think like one of our number one inherent needs as women with our mate is security and yeah. what's sad now is that you see so many men that are scared that won't take risks mm -hmm. that have brain fog that their, their memory is gone and honestly all of that is those are all symptoms of low testosterone mm -hmm. and you, we have these we have these things that in, in the world plastic bottles there's the air that we breathe there's so much that's diminishing the testosterone levels in men mm -hmm. that it's it's almost like sad because most people aren't even paying attention to it. Mm -hmm. So, so what, I mean, I don't want to keep talking forever. So I want to ask you ladies. Sure. So Krista, what did you get from the book? What, what, what did you learn? And um, what do you think that would help you like in being a support, like for your honey, I mean, you guys, honestly, you're in the, the perfect ideal location because you're not exposed to everything. Like we are living where we live. So, so Gerald already probably has high natural testosterone levels. Yeah, Gerald's definitely a manly man, um, but we do notice even in the culture here, you know, <laughs> men starting to wear jeans is tight as, you know, tighter than mine. <laughs> and, um, you know, so there is kind of that, that gray line that's kind of notice, noticeable in men where they're not um, emitting that, that masculine vibe. Uh, for me, I didn't really know much about testosterone before I read the book and I was kind of scared to read it. I don't know. I just didn't, I didn't know what to expect, but I found it really empowering and I thought it was good to learn about maybe, you know, some of the side effects from it. And, um, it gives me a, like, I feel like I have a better insight into Gerald and, um, and his life. And, and I could see that maybe at some point it wouldn't be a, a bad thing to add. And I liked all the research that he did. I mean, he took about 15 to 20 plus research at, you know, years worth of research and put it into a book, made cheat sheets, made, manuals, <coughs> you know, food guides. And he didn't just talk about, um, if you're feeling this way, he said, first, you know, are you, you know, what, what are you doing? for your eating habits, you know, what are you doing for your exercise habits? Look at that first and, you know, and if that still is not good, then go and talk to a doctor. And, and he did take a subject that is, you know, taboo and made it, um, you know, easily accessible for, for anyone to consume, whether you're male or female. And um, I would say my favorite part was, um, as a, uh, being exposed to structural integration was where he talked about the fascial adhesions that you could get from injecting and to address that and to, to yeah. make sure you break that up with either with a, a rolling ball or going and seeing a massage therapist. And um, I thought that was really cool. Right, right. How about you, Erica? Yeah, actually, that's but funny, Chris. Like, this isn't like in, in God's country. She's like in this fabulous, amazing <laughs> world right now, right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm actually in Boulder right now visiting my brother, um, and, and I'm sitting on his porch, and right, like, I think I can kind of point to it, the flat irons are literally in his backyard, wow. so I've been, like, just tooling around and, like, hiking and climbing and taking a lot of pictures, and, yeah, it's, like, amazing here. It's ridiculous. Um, it's, it gives really good perspective. Um, but, yeah, but back to the book. Um, it's funny, Chris, I was actually going to say I, I appreciate the um, – the, the many different issues that Jay brings up in the book. I mean, like, like you said in the beginning, I think a lot of people look at a title like testosterone replacement therapy and they're like, oh, big muscles, bleh, you know, especially maybe women because we, because, you know, we don't, we have less testosterone than men, obviously. So I think it's, it was really informative for me. Um, and it was really educational to, to realize how much more that affects than just like muscles and sex drive. You know what I mean? So I liked that he talked about, he gave like a ton of detail on taking testosterone and, um, you know, proper injection. And I even had it in my notes that the way that he talked about preventing scarring, I think that's really, that's, it just shows that he's so serious about it and he really wants to um, like help people. Um, on all levels, not just like, you know, on the, maybe the mainstream like level that you might, I guess, associate it, associate with testosterone replacement or enhancement. Um, 
and I didn't even know before that um, that low testosterone can affect like mental clarity and you know and things like early onset of Alzheimer's and stuff like that. You know, I mean, I had one grandparent pass from Alzheimer's, so that's that always gets me. So um, that's really interesting to to learn. Right. And it, yeah. But what I love about it is that it's such easy reading. Like some of the, some of the books that you've read, and even for women, if, if you look at some of the health books, especially written by doctors, mm -hmm. some of the language that's used is so hard for us as lay people to understand because we're like, all right, well, I feel this way, but what does that mean? And then they use these yeah. long words, well, blah, 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 this I, I look just like nerd alert. <laughs> <laughs> I like that too. I love those. Like, I, I, I remember when he was writing the book and he, and he would stay up for like hours on end and he would come to bed and just be so excited because he, he finished another portion and being because I was behind the scenes and seeing that and then seeing the finished product, it's so, it's so rewarding. It really is. And then to see how many people he's affected because of the book, because it, it is, I mean, honestly, you guys, the funny part about it, this is what's weird. So we all think that we go to our doctor because our doctor knows best, right? Mm -hmm. But sadly, they don't. They really don't understand what this means. Most doctors don't even know how to apply or, or, or give out a prescription for testosterone placement therapy. So many times, Jay, you know, like part of it too is reading your blood panels. Like we spoke about, you know, about being healthy. Mm -hmm. You've got to understand how to read your blood work to understand what's going on with you from the inside out. So we understand, well, look, oh, I don't, I feel this way. But then when you look at your blood work, what does that mean? And so when he, when he shows the example of the blood work in here, it's like, okay, well, this is what this is and breaks it down so you can understand it. And if we can learn how to read it, we can help our doctors better because we know our body. You know how you feel. You know what's going on inside of you. So this is just, such, it's almost like you take this. I, almost like, I honestly like the hardcover better because with a book like this, you can make notes. Okay, well, this is this is what I'm feeling. This is what's going on here. And men, men right now, when when they feel like less energy or whatever it is, it's like, they, oh, I got to man up. I got to man up, and I'm I just got to be strong, or I got to figure it out, or or they'll just sit back and let the woman take control. And then what's I mean, if, if you look at society as a whole today, and then I think every single one of us can see this. What do you see happening with men and women right now? Do you see do you see any changes that's happened over the years? Do you see anything, Erica? Yeah, I mean I see a ooh, that's a complicated question. I see a lot of changes. Um, and some of them are really empowering to women. I mean, I think just giving, you know, putting us in positions of um, higher authority and more decision making. And then I also see I've in my personal experience, I've also seen men sort of take a back seat, um, <clears throat> not out of like respect to the woman, but out of like, I don't think I can handle this, you know, or um, so definitely a, an, um, maybe a little bit less confidence. Um, and I'm a yoga teacher. I can't tell you how many men talk to me about um, yoga and why they don't do it because it's a girl's thing, you know, and then and then the, and the men that they see that practice yoga are like, you know, they have these add impressions of and it's just I don't know it's it's definitely a it's definitely a multi <clears throat> faceted issue because I think some things like I said have worked in in favor of like women's empowerment and rights um, but then but it's interesting to see how that affects um, a man's sense of self because I mean it can go both ways they can be they can choose to be bolstered by that and become like you know sort of a team like a power couple almost kind of thing or or like I said, they could just lay down in the middle of the road and be like, I don't know, uh, you know, so. Yeah, what, what about you, Krista? What have you noticed? Um, well, I've noticed um, just here in, in Mexico, I've seen a lot of um, kind of more feminine and in culture in general, because they're just copying America, is uh, mm -hmm. a feminine, a feminization of men, where they become more feminine, mm -hmm. wearing almost more, womenly clothes or in the programs it's um it's pretty popular to to mimic being gay or um which there's nothing wrong with that but i have seen a a big onset of that growing in our culture you know than maybe 10 or 20 years ago um mm -hmm. 
And then in the relationship, I, I'm blessed to be with a man who empowers me and, um, and is a real man. But I've also been on the other side of that where I've been with, a, with someone who's not a man, uh, you know, or my definition of what a man might be. And, and it didn't empower me to be the best that I was. And I think uh, having the real masculine man and the real like feminine women, woman, and then they come together, I think it, it, it's what it's meant to be and it complements one another. And, um, mm -hmm. And Jay gives ways on, on getting back to that for men. And his whole book really is just about empowering men to be the best that they can be, to be the best version that they can be, to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to have drive, to make good decisions, to be confident, and then with that to eat right, eat clean, exercise, and um, live a longer, healthier life. Mm -hmm. um, and also he, he tells you, he encourages you to know thyself, to, to really look within and um, and be your own doctor, like you said, Monica, not to just defer to someone else and, um, you know, to, to really know your blood, what's going on inside and how you can, uh, you know, better, better yourself. So, so he, he spoke to a man recently and, and the man was having some issues. And so he was like, well, you know, my doctor said that all I have to do to increase my testosterone levels is to eat more lettuce. And he was like, uh, what? <laughs> That's, that's the sad part about all of it is like so many doctors are not informed. So if you don't know, I mean, and this goes with us too, as women, if mm -hmm. we don't know our own bodies, if we don't know what's going on, we just pass things off. Like sometimes I'll say, I'll, I'll, I'll let Jane, I'll go like, I, I just feel like I feel off. And he's like, well, what do you feel? I'm like, well, I feel like X, Y, Z. And he's like, look, you're the one who should know your body. What's going on. Tell like, so it's like, he wants what is going on. And it's true. We have got to know our own body what is going on with us and if we don't we go to a doctor and we're like oh well, like sadly the the um, baby boomer generation like my dad's generation um they go to the doctors and they treat the doctors as god like the, my doctor yeah. said this is what i have to do so this is what i'm going to do instead of doing some research like jay has done so much research to help people understand what's going on with themselves so they don't have to do the research. Like they really honestly just have to look, okay, well, what is going on here? And yeah. this will help tremendously because it's like almost a shortcut to help men understand what's going on with them. Mm -hmm. and, and not only that, but what I've, you know, I, I know we were speaking about like women and men and what's going on right now, but one time Jay and I were, we were, I forget where we were, I think we might've been in Vegas or somewhere and we heard this woman speaking to her husband and we were both floored because and I, I it's not the first time and I, I know it won't be the last time but she was like and I don't remember his name like Frank I said get over here right now right now Frank where are you come here and he was like like country and that honestly is the sign of the times it's like I'm not saying it's like that with all women and I'm not saying that you know it, it's like every single person but that is part of of low testosterone is is you you don't have that that like masculine strong confident persona any longer and so you allow like people because ultimately like in a relationship like that what ends up happening is the woman loses respect for the man mm -hmm. and then she just starts treating him like he's nobody and that nobody wants a relationship like that even a person who's in it like i was in a relationship where i was the dominant one before and i remember feeling lost like this was not right. This is not what I wanted. I don't, I don't want this. I want a strong man. I want you to lead me, lead me. And I would ask him to lead me at times and he wouldn't know what to do because he was like, uh, well, what do I do? And so he would be like a deer in headlights. So it comes down to all of that because when men have even low levels of testosterone, even their sexual intimacy levels diminishes. And hey, we, we all want think, look, hey, what book was really popular last year? Was it Fifty Shades of Grey? Because women want a man who will take control in the bedroom. Let's face it. Every woman does to some degree. It's great to have role reversal sometimes, but it's also great to have a man who's dominant in the bedroom. And you know, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go, go, go. <laughs> I, um, I was just talking about this um, uh, with a couple friends the other day on how, um, you know, that whole thing where girls tend to, at least at some level, prefer like the bad boy instead of the nice guy um and it's not necessarily that that we're attracted to like bad men but there there are elements in that that make us like that excite us more like that like high confidence and that like take charge and that sort of like er you know which can come across or be manifested in like like rebellion or like 
mm-hmm. or, or, you know, kind of like a bad boy or something rather than having the guy like, sure, honey, whatever you want, you know, yeah. this and that. Um, and, th- and those are all great qualities. I guess like there's a balance to everything, but there is like just a primal attraction to like strong, like, er, you know, <laughs> men. So I totally get what you're saying. And I think like what I was saying earlier um, is it's, it's, it makes me happy to see women more empowered, but I also think it intimidates men and, um, uh, or it can intimidate men. And then you start to get into things like, well, you know, it's, um, I think people become afraid of like traditionalism, you know, where they think like men should be the one that work and women should be the ones that stay home and cook and raise kids. And it's, you know, I've lived in large cities where that's like, if you are a mother and you don't work full time, it's like a bad thing. You know what I mean? It's like, well, you're so, you know, old fashioned and like, I can't believe you settle for being a housewife and stuff like that. And it's like, that's ridiculous. You know, uh, first and foremost, you should do what you want to do. But um, the reason that there are those traditional roles, one of the reasons there are those traditional roles between men and women is because like men and women are not the same. Mm -hmm. We have different areas of strength, you know? And, and like you said, Krista, they balance each other out. And so, you know, everybody's different, but there is a certain like natural element of like men being like, you know, providers and strong and protective and take charge and women being, you know, sort of the, the, the other side of that, you know? So I think there's a lot of value to that. And, And it's easy for us to get away from that in this sort of society where it's like, Oh, don't box men into these roles or something. Yeah. You know, Go ahead. Go I was just going to say, when we first got married, I, we, um, we spent some time in Arkansas and I was really nervous about being stereotyped as like, you know, woman, go get me my food and heat it up. <laughs> I didn't want that. And I have this memory and it's actually now I, I kind of, am, you know, embarrassed about it, but his mom asked, you know, you know, mentioned that Gerald might be hungry for lunch. And I said, that's nice. He's, you know, there's, there's a microwave in the kitchen. <laughs> and I don't even... <laughs> I don't even use a microwave now <laughs> and, and it's funny in hindsight because now I run a blog on cooking and so I cook <laughs> all of our meals um, but it was just kind of funny because I was like scared to be ter- stereotyped as you know just a woman and um, right but yeah. now I find joy in the in the tasks of being a woman and um, and you know in the different things that I get to do and um, and I was also going to say in the bedroom uh, for the part where he said uh, testosterone can help men with their um, erectile dysfunction if they have anything going on like that instead of using Viagra or pills. And mm-hmm. um, I also resonated with that because a vegan diet can do the same thing because it's about blood flow. And so yeah. I thought that was cool. Anything you can do to, you know, enjoy life longer the way you were supposed to, I, that's great. Right. And I think touching on what you both said as far as like the women in the male um, roles, I think that if, if you really truly look at it, there's a, there's, a man and there's a woman, there's feminine, there's masculine for a reason. And it's not saying that we're attempting to take the woman's empowerment away because that's, that's by no means right. what someone's attempting to do. What it is rather is like, there, there, a woman at, at times to be submissive is actually even powerful because we know when to say, okay, I'm gonna relinquish this power over to you. Mm-hmm. Are my, like, I'm gonna put you as the leader of our family, for example. <clears throat> I understand that you're going to have our best interest at heart. That takes power in itself because that's, yeah. that's like, Hey, right. I, I trust you enough to make the right decisions for my family because I know that you take this leadership role. Mm-hmm. And then many times what women will do nowadays is because they don't trust their mate. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. I got it. Give it to me. I, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. No, I'll do it. I'll do it. And so mm-hmm. over time, that's taking some of their power away. That's taking some of their power away. And then before you know it, there's no respect. And then I, I was actually working you know, quite heavily with a lot of very strong, powerful women. And most powerful women, it was interesting because they were with weaker men and yet they were having an affair with another man that they felt was more dominant because in the bedroom, their weaker man was no good. Mm -hmm. And so they wanted to have that, they wanted to have that dynamic, but they didn't want to have the full dynamic of it. And so scared it might take their power or something. Right. Right. So that's, that's like, you're like, hey, there's some, there's some lines that they're going to cross. So it's like, yeah, you want mm-hmm. many, many women that say they want a powerful man. They have a hard time relinquishing some mm-hmm. of, of the, I guess you can say, um, leadership role. Yeah. It's, but you got to decide, like, okay, if you want a strong, powerful male, then are you okay with allowing him to lead? Yeah. Because a right. strong man is going to take the lead. Yeah. So, I was just um, yeah. I was just listening to something about trust, and it was saying that trust was, you know, 
trusting that that person is going to do your best interest or have your best interest at heart and, and capitalize on that or, you know, or, you know, do what's best for you and you trust, you let go and you fully give yourself and you trust mm -hmm. that they're going to do your best interest and vice versa. Right. No, it's yeah. And it's like what they say about, well, I don't have children, but I, I, I keep hearing that if you want to teach responsibility, you give them responsibility. Um, it's like, it's that whole thing where if people have something to take care of, then they, they kind of step up to the job. So it's like, if you treat your mate um, like somebody that you already trust and that you, you, you allow them to have that responsibility and you, and, and you sort of, if you give out that positivity, like you act as if it's already happening, then, then it will happen. Whereas if you act as if, like if, you're, if your actions come from a place of fear or like, oh, he's gonna mess it up so I can't let him do it. Well, that's what's gonna happen. You know, obviously. So it's just, you, you need to, it goes back to, I think one of our earlier episodes, Monica, when you were talking about like manifesting your ideal mate and saying like, what kind of person do you want to be to, because that's the person you're going to attract. Right. It's the same thing. Exactly. Exactly. And, and I, I know we're running short on time because I know Erica's going to enjoy some beautiful weather out there in Colorado. Oh. <laughs> what I did want to say is like women, if your man is suffering from some of the um, effects of low testosterone, brain fog, um, their libidos diminish, um, no energy, lack of confidence. Look, don't make it harder for them to seek help. I know so many women out there today that fear testosterone replacement therapy because they're ignorant of what it means. Mm -hmm. And look, he, allow him to get checked. Just like we go to the doctors and we have our yearly checkup, it's because we wanna make sure everything's going okay with the inside of us. Allow your man to be the best version of himself and trust that all will work out when you allow your man to lead. It's mm -hmm. awesome. It really, really is. So I appreciate every single one of you guys and I appreciate you ladies reading it and I hope it really helped open up some, um, some avenues for you as far as testosterone replacement therapy because it's actually yeah. – Really cool subject when you think about it when you start when you go out in your day today like pay attention and, and look at, at men as a whole and you start noticing like it's it's different it really is different so yeah thank you. no thank you so much and and again thank you um monica for for uh i'm really glad i got the opportunity to read this and learn about this because it's i'm not the person who's going to walk into the bookstore and be like i think i'm going to buy a book on testosterone replacement <laughs> therapy you know of my own accord but like I th that's why we're t we're connected that's why we do these podcasts and um it really it for me it helped shed a lot of light into something that's a very like it's a completely natural um remedy to issues that are like not complicated you know and like you said it's better than taking like viagra or whatever else people might take um and it's really great for um for, for women, um, the partners of these men to understand what they might be going through and vice versa too. Yeah. And you know, what's interesting you say that too, is we as women, we have levels of testosterone too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. We have, <laughs> we have a certain levels that, you know, like, like I had, I had a lower <coughs> testosterone too. Like there's a certain amount of testosterone needed for a women too, to balance out the estrogen. Like, honestly, if we had way too many, too much estrogen, then we all would be crazy. Because <laughs> that's you do. But look, at, that's why so many men right now, a lot of women look like women, like they have like actual breasts, they have yeah. deposits because they have too much estrogen. And that's mm -hmm. all, honestly another sign of it is their fat and where it's at. Mm -hmm. You know, Krista. <laughs> oh, uh, thanks, thanks again. <laughs> it was a, I wouldn't have read the book without um, without doing the show, and it was kind of a subject that I didn't know much about. And I respect Jay. I know it's kind of a you know a taboo subject, but so is veganism, and so is the Anunnaki. So I can get that. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I thought it was. I thought he did a really good job. I thought it was a nice nice book to read. It was informative. I learned a lot, and I think whether you're a man or a woman, you could benefit from reading his book. Yeah, and you guys yeah, buy it to take to your to the doctors, men, if you know, or women. Get it for your your husbands, your brothers, um, your sons, so that they have something for themselves to take to a doctor and say, "Look, doctor, this <clears throat> is what I'm going through." So, mm -hmm. thank you all. Be the best. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> <Ciao. laughs>